Okay, so we're still continuing with exercise 2e. It's a pretty big one. Um, but this time we're going to be looking at the intersections of complex loci. So far, we've just been doing one kind of loci drawing at a time. This is the first time we're going to have two of them at the same time. And we're going to try and find the solution to where these two complex um, loci are going to cross each other. So it says, find the complex number z that satisfies both this thing that we've got here, which we know is going to be a circle, and this thing here, which we know is going to be a half line. I'll talk about what we're actually doing once we've got the sketch done. Now you'll notice this one that we've got here is the same question that we've just done in the previous video. So I'm actually going to kind of draw that from the previous one. So it was at minus three, minus two. So minus three, minus two was where the half line was being drawn and it was coming upwards like this, okay? This one also is a circle. It's got a center of minus three, minus two, and it has a radius of 10. So in fact, I think I probably should have drawn this a little bit bigger, but hey ho. Radius of 10 means it's definitely going to be crossing. Let's see if I can grab all of this and pull it across. Good. It means it's definitely gonna be crossing the axis here and here, because it's going to be a lot bigger than this distance, which is three. That's minus three here, and that's minus two, okay? Now, if you think about what's actually happening, this one, which is the circle, is any of these points around here. That could be any of those points. But what we're actually trying to say is we want it to be any of those points on the circle, plus we want it to be any of those points along there. Because we want it to satisfy both of them, at the same time, that means it has to be the one place where it is actually matching both. In other words, where do the lines cross over? So there's two different ways you can do this. Method one is coordinate geometry, drawing the diagram and thinking about the patterns that you know to do with shapes. When I say coordinate geometry, I really mean stuff to do with shapes. The second method is by using Cartesian, Cartesian equations and solving them simultaneously. Now, what I've noticed in the past is that people usually prefer to do method two because they're very comfortable with algebra. But I want to try and draw you away from that. I try and want you to think about this one more because although there's nearly always two methods, if you're good with geometry, this method is far superior and is often a lot quicker at coming to the answer and it's a lot easier to make fewer mistakes. So let's have a look at this diagram that we've got here. First of all, we know something about this line that we've got. We know that the length of this line is the radius of the circle, and the radius of the circle is 10. We also know that this angle is 3 pi over 4, which means that if I was to add in a little line here, this angle is pi over 4. Now, pi over 4 you should know this already, but pi over 4 is 45 degrees. And as soon as I see a triangle that's got 45 degrees with it, I start thinking of a very special triangle, which is the isosceles triangle. OK, and we know that this length over here is 10 and this is going to be a right angle. So I'm just going to get some of that information. I'm going to kind of add this onto the diagram. I know that this must be 90. In fact, the angle at the top must also be pi over 4, but I don't think that's going to be that useful. And I know that these two lengths here must be equal. Just to remind you what we're doing, we are trying to find out what is this complex number here. In other words, what is the coordinate of that complex number? So let's see. I think to find out the x coordinate of this, well, I know it's minus 3 for this bit. It's minus 3 across plus this extra journey here. And the y coordinate looks like it's, well, minus 2 to begin with and then it's going to come up a certain amount. So all we need to do is find out how long is this journey and this journey that we've got here. Well, we can do that because of this property of the triangle that we have. I'm going to simplify this a bit more, OK? I'm just going to draw a triangle that looks like this. This is 10, and we know that these two sides here and here, they must be the same length as each other because it's 45 degrees here. When it's 45 degrees like this, you can now see very clearly it's an isosceles triangle. So these two sides must be equal in length. So if I just call this one, I don't know, A or B or C, they must be the same as each other. I can just do Pythagoras. So A squared plus A squared equals 10 squared. In other words, 2A squared is 100. 
So a squared is 50, and so a is the square root of 50, uh, which is the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which is just 5 root 2. So this distance is 5 root 2, and this distance is 5 root 2, and we're trying to describe what is this coordinate that we've got here. Well, that coordinate, let's start off with the x coordinate. To go from the origin, you're coming 3 across and 5 root 2 across. So it's going to be minus 3, because you're going to the left, minus 5 root 2. That is the x coordinate. The y coordinate to get here, well, we started off coming down minus 2 to get to the central point, and then we're adding 5 root 2 on. So it's going to be minus 2 plus 5 root 2. So that's what it is as a coordinate that doesn't quite answer the question. We need to say what is the complex number z. And um, if you're not so sure about how I got to this coordinate, try and think about where you are at the origin and what you're doing in the left and right direction. So it was minus 3 and then minus 5 root 2. This one was harder to see that to get to it you came down 2 and then up 5 root 2, down 2 and then up 5 root 2. So let's just actually write it in its complex number form. It is going to be x, which is this, plus the y value multiplied by i. So that complex number satisfies both of these things that we've got here. And I guarantee if you took this complex number, you added 3 and 2i to it, and you found its modulus, you would get 10. And also, if you took this complex number, you added 3 and 2i to it, and you found its argument, I guarantee you that you would get 3 pi over 4. So we're going to now try and do this using Cartesian equations, which I think is going to be a bit slower, because you may have to work out this Cartesian equation, and we're going to have to work out this Cartesian equation first. We have this one nice and easy, it's ready to go, but we're going to have to, um, I'm, I've made it a bit easier. If you didn't have it, you would have to work it out. So we have y equals minus x minus 5. That's one of the Cartesian equations. And then for the circle, if you remember from earlier on, this would be x plus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals the radius squared. So I'm going to take this y value here and I'm going to sub it in here. So to begin by expanding these brackets, I have x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus minus x minus 5 plus 2 squared equals 100. I've just subbed in this in place of y. So it's x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus x squared. Uh, I should probably quickly simplify this over here. So that's going to be minus x minus 3 squared. That's x squared plus 6x plus 9 as well. Yeah, that's correct, equals 100. So I've now got 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 equals 100. I'm going to half everything, so that's x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 50. And I'm going to subtract 50, so that's x squared plus 6x minus 41 equals 0. Now I'm going to go to my quadratic equation solver just off screen here. So I'm going to put in my... Uh, 1, 6, and minus 41, and we get that x is either equal to minus 3 plus 5 root 2, or x is equal to minus 3 minus 5 root 2. Now that's odd, because we only had um, this one. We only had the second one before. We didn't have this first one, so I'm kind of thinking, hmm, I wonder why I've got this one. Well, let's just continue. Let's find out what the value of y would be. So we know that y is minus x minus 5. So y would be this one here negated and then subtract 5. So it would be 3 minus 5 root 2 minus 5. So that's minus 2 minus 5 root 2. And here we have y equals this one negated. So that's 3 plus 5 root 2 minus 5, which is minus 2 plus 5. 5 root 2. Now we can tell these are the correct ones. Look, I've got this one and this one here, which matches these ones that I've got here and here. So what is going on with these ones that I'm going to highlight here in purple? Well, we only have a half line here. And when you're solving these equations simultaneously, 
It doesn't know. The maths doesn't know that it's a half line. They think when we're solving it in um, simultaneously, they're presuming that it's a long line. They don't know that. And so they're also giving us this solution that we've got here. That solution that we've got here, you need to try and work out that it's not going to be valid. The bigger x value, which is this one, is not going to be valid. So you have to do some problem solving at the end to decide whether you actually want to include all of the solutions. Now I know this one has more of like a, a jump of being able to recognize these kinds of triangles and different patterns, but I do think this is the more superior one that's going to help you become a better mathematician. I'm going to recommend some questions for you to do. So I want you to leave out question 12 for a while, but I'm going to help you with question 12 in a future video. I want you to try question 11 and then 13 to 19. I would like you to try maybe both methods. And in some upcoming videos, I'm only going to do the geometric approaches for questions 11, 14, and 16, and 17, because I would like you to try working towards that kind of um, approach for this. You can do them with algebra, but you'll see here it's quite complicated. And then you've also got to do some, some reasoning at the end to decide which solutions you won't use. Um, if you can do this, it's going to be much better. If you'd like me to help you through some of those questions, stay tuned and I will be doing that in the next videos.